My friend, it's Hunter from Interactive, and in today's video, we take a look at creating this bottle from scratch. And this is some inspiration, obviously, from over here. And I wanted to try and recreate this as best as I can. So this is the result that I got first time around. And I'll walk through this step by step, show you how to model it all, light it all, texture it all, how to do all that. So you can follow along. This one's going to be a longer tutorial. So sit back and relax. You can also follow along with the project files, which will be down in the description. If you're interested in product visualization, our Blender course is the perfect place to start. Learn how to create impressive product CGI that looks professional and realistic. With lifetime access to updates and new courses, you'll have endless opportunities to grow and refine your skills. Enroll now and take the first step towards becoming a pro in product visualization. All right, so let's jump in. First thing I'll do is start a new document. Now I will be going at a bit of a faster pace just as there's a lot to go through here. So I'm just gonna create some collections that I haven't got. So a reference collection and a backup. These are all created by default when I set up my default Blender scene. Um, and in the reference one, I'll import in an image and it'll be a reference image. And I'll have to go find my images here. There we go. Load this image in. And so with this image, we can come down to the object data properties over here and drop the opacity down to like 0.5 so we can see the, the plane or the mesh through it the guides and we'll drop this sort of on the baseline here somewhere in here and then what I can do is go toggle my restrictions this restriction here is the selectable one so then I can make this unselectable and I can just sort of Let's um, let's move the collection to the top. Make it unselectable. Rename this uh, ref for reference. All right, so now I can start modeling it. And so this one will be pretty simple. Modeling, I'll just go Shift A and we'll add in a mesh and we'll go start with a circle. Now if I tab into edit mode and press one, I can see the vertices which will make it a little bit easier to model. And I'll just model the base shape. So it'd be a simple shape like this. Um, let's select all, shift N to flip the normals. You can turn this option on and off by here, the face orientation, and it just shows you whether the model is inside out or not. I usually keep it on just so that I know a bit easier. Now, what I'm going to do up here Maybe I'll go from this view. If I go Alt Z, that'll go X ray mode, and I can just grab this top loop here by Alt clicking or Option clicking. And I can E right click to drop that in place. And I'll just scale this one down. E, we'll just bring it up to somewhere like here. I'm going to add another cap on. So if I go Control plus, and scale this in a bit. We can go something like this. And I'll model another bit onto here. That'll go for our, it'll be like the spray cap bit because there's a spring and everything. And this is a room spray, as you can see here. So some good old fragrance for our room. All right, so down the bottom here, I'll just grab this. And what I'll do, is I'll F to fill and I to inset it a couple times and I'll just go I'll start lifting this up so I'll grab these two loops just lift these two up like that then grab that loop and then I can um, let's go inset one more F or M to merge at the center here now if I tab out I can bring my circle into my product here. We will call this bottle. And I can hide that. 
and I, if I press control 2 I'll add two levels of subdivision here under my modifiers and I can right click this and shade this smooth like so if I add some more loops control R up here and that'll help the shape a bit more now what I usually do with this is instead of adding edge loops into each corner I'll just select the edges if I can so we'll go something like this deselect that one grab this one grab these edges just go front on and I'll just have a look at this and so I can press Control B to bevel this and I'll just look at if I just look at the curve that it's creating as you can see in the top corner here you can see the curve that's creating I can bring it up to a certain level somewhere here I'm going to press P and keep pulling and what that'll do when I click is change the shape so here I can change the shape and it will pull it up so it's something like this and that really tightens the edges now the base what I'm going to do is actually bring this loop up and I'm going to bring this bit up too so it's a bit more rounded at the bottom here like that top edge is quite good maybe just adjust this a little bit you can alt click these loops gg to edge slide them something like that now what I'm going to do is go front on and we'll turn our reference back on and we'll add in a solidify modifier pull it above the subdivision let's zoom in and have a look at this edge here and so then what I can do is just holding shift increase the thickness and I can also press even thickness to make sure that it's a nice even thickness around tap into edit mode I'll add a loop cut up here maybe one in the center just for support and we've got the beginning of our shape so it's looking quite good we will need to apply this solidify so what I'll do is duplicate this right click to drop it in place then just drag it down into backup and then I'll just hide the backup so it disappears and then this one I can apply the solidify and we've got some overlapping mesh in here if you can look in the edge some of the mesh is overlapping so to fix this edge loop we have to work out which way we want it to go so if I just press 1 and select some of these edges so what I want to happen is this edge loop is the one that's the top here it's the flat bit here so I want everything to come down to that level and so what I'll do is I'll sort of start merging this so that's an extra loop in there that's on its own and so what I'm going to do turn on auto merge and I'll just look one straight on I'll just go GG move this down and before I do that I'm going to come up here change this to vertex snapping to vertex which means I can snap it to these edges and then I can do this so I'll go GG holding down to control I can hover over this edge here and it will snap and straight away it will uh, align that so then I'll grab this loop here this one here look straight on and I'll go GG and what I'll do is if I bring it close enough maybe snap it'll merge because it's close enough then I can turn off the auto merge up here now when I tab out I've got this shape in here and the reason that's happening is because I haven't got enough edge loops inside so this edge here we can go control B pull it out to bevel it and we can add like a nice sharp edge loop like we did before and that'll keep the same settings as long as we haven't done a bevel elsewhere with different settings 
So now we've got this shape, so that's good and ready to go. All right, so the next shape I wanna do is probably the liquid inside. And what's happening here currently is that the bottle is coming down and it's got this base that comes all the way down to here. But in reality, the bottom of the bottle here comes down and curves around here. So what I can do is we're going into edit mode. I'm going to select this middle point. I can get it in here. This one here and I can go control plus on my number pad. Or you can actually go to select and select more. You can use select more. And I'll go up to somewhere here like this and go X and delete the vertices. So now I'll grab this inside loop here and we'll have a look on the side here. And then what I can do is actually grid fill this. So I've got it set up on my quick favorites because I use it all the time. But so basically it's face, grid fill, and to set it, put it on your quick favorites, you can right click this and go add to quick favorites. So then what we can do is grid fill this. So grid fill. Now this is quite, it's got a lot of geometry, so I can actually drop the span down. There's not as much. And I'm looking for one that gets a point directly in the center, something like this. Um, this could work too. I think I'm going to go six, I think. And you can offset it as well if you want it to be straight. So now what I can do is just look straight on. And I'm going to just grab the bottom here and just plus, control plus, and then press H to hide all that. Now I can come up here, switch this to sphere. This is our proportional editing. So if I turn that on, I can select this middle point, uh, face straight on, and then just start dragging this down to create a nice curve down the bottom. So we'll match the curve of this here and then we can move it into place. So I'll turn off proportional editing, then we can move this into place and I'm also going to grab this one, which we might need to just grab straight through. Bring this up like so. I'll add in a loop cut here to change the direction of that a little bit. Now if I press, if I'm happy with that, I can press uh, Alt H to reveal all the hidden mesh. So there we go. So we've got that in there. If I hide my reference, we've got this nice shape in the bottom here. But then I can make my, my liquid from that. So if I just select that center point, control plus all the way up to the top. So we'll go further. Shift D, right click to place it back where it was copied from, then P straight after, and then separate by selection. So this, this will separate it into two objects. Now this one I can call liquid. All right, so I'm going to start modeling the top bit here. So if I bring, come up here, tab into edit mode, I'm just going to select the top here and go Shift S. And while holding it down, I can just move my mouse down and it will say cursor to selected. And so I'll bring my 3D cursor up here. So now when I go shift A and add in a sphere, I'm going to drop the vertices down to 16 and then add, tab into edit mode and I can scale this down like so. I'm just gonna bring it down just a tad. We'll look at our reference here to see where this might sit. And I'll just sit it in here. So I'll go EZ it up to something that might sort of sit on top. So I might scale this down, shift just a tad. Something like that. Now we're not going to see this, so you can choose whether to model this or not. So now what I'm going to do is grab we want to fill these faces, so I'm going to go F, just to inset this twice. 
or a couple times. M merge at the center. F inset a couple times. M merge at center. So now if I tab out, I'm going to hide my reference and just work on it from here. So I'm going to go control two, alt Z so I can look at the mesh, tab, A select all, shift N to recalculate the normals. And now I want to add in some geometry to this. So I'll go control R, add in some loop cuts here. Now I'm going to select these two edge loops, control B to bevel these, do a really small bevel, right click, shade smooth. Now we want to keep this sort of squares as, as best as possible, try and keep these as squares because what we're going to do now is apply a subdivision. So what I'll do is tab into object mode, then I'll hover over the subdivision and press control A and that'll apply it. So we get this really dense mesh here. If I look straight on, what I'm going to do now is go three and I'm going to sort of select an area here to punch a hole out of. So we're going to sort of figure out how big do I want the, like the nozzle, the spray nozzle to be. First, I'm just going to edit this shape a little bit. So we'll go backslash. I can grab the top here, go control plus down to there. And if I go Alt Z, I can scale this by pressing S and then Shift Z, which will exclude the Z axis and just scale this in a little bit further. Now you could use your reference here. I'm just going off I. Um, I think this will work. Slash to come out of local view. And then we've got this shape here. So I'm going to hide my reference for now. We'll go three for face select and Alt Alt Z to get out of uh, X-ray, and we've got to sort of figure out where we want to cut this. So I think I want it somewhere here. Do I want it bigger? How big do I want it? No. So just figure. I think it's somewhere here. So I'll grab that. I'll go inset it somewhere, something like that. I can go X, delete this, actually X, delete the faces. That'll delete everything in the middle. Now what I can do is just grab the edge loop of this, right click with loop tools, and we can make it a circle, so you can see here. And now what I want to do is we'll just change the angle a little bit, straighten it up. And I also would probably like to, <coughs> excuse me, I would like to bring this in a little bit. So if I come here and turn on radius, it's a big ball of red mess, but bring this down some way like here. And then I can just take it up to something like that. And another option I don't want to hit is flatten. So what flattening is doing, hang on, maybe I do need it. Let's have a look. If I turn off the radius, let's go flatten, turn on the radius. See what this looks like. It's pushing the geometry in. If I turn off flatten, We'll go something like this. Then I'll right click and go curve again. We'll turn off the radius. Should be working. It's not doing it very well. So we'll lock an influence. Let's go lock the Y. I'll straighten this up, something like this. And look, if I add another subdivision, it's pretty much going to handle it. 
So I'm pretty happy with that. If I go F, fill this, inset this, then I can X delete that face. And now I can just grab this edge loop and I can go E, Y, and just take it in a little bit. Then E, Y, take it in more. Something like this. You can right click shade smooth. We've got some small things, but if I go control two, I think pretty much subdivision handles it. Gets rid of any fancy stuff. I'm also going to could try now let's leave it yeah we'll leave it select this in a loop now shift D and we'll grab this right click P and we'll separate their selection so we've got this guy in edit mode what I'll do is scale this on the Y axis by zero which means it will flatten it all onto one plane now what I can do is just move this back on the Y axis. I'm going to E to extrude it back like so and then I'll grab this here. We'll go F to fill. A select all. Let's go shift N. Recalculate the normals. Grab this out of loop. F to fill. Now I'm going to isolate this by hitting the slash key. Let's bring this up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is just basically inset this a tad and we'll do something here in a second. And then I'll keep insetting it like this and you can see that it's starting to cross over and also it's not a circle. So what I'm going to do is right click, go circle and then we'll go flattened like so and I'll turn off this and I'll turn this back angle back to zero now I can scale this down and then I can inset it again down to something like that and then I'm just going to go E to extrude it back like that that'll work I can also grab the inner loop here and bevel this really small bevel like this I'll grab this loop here I'm going to go control B to bevel it we'll leave that center bevel and then I'll just insert it twice just using E like so I might add an edge loop on that one that side, add an edge loop there. Going to add another edge loop there. And we should have our center shape. It's a little oblong, but <laughs> we'll leave it. I don't think you'll notice it that size. There's some small shading issues with the this bit, but it's just basically how I've modeled it. It's coming in a bit too far. But I'm just going to leave it. I think it'll be fine at a distance. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll probably join these two objects together. Just select them, control J to join them into one mesh. And I'll just call this um, spray cap or something like that. Creative name. Now I'll create the top cap. We pop our reference back on. So this one should be fairly easy. Shift A, uh, circle. We'll leave it at 16 segments. Probably great. Good, decent for what we're doing. Easy. And we'll just do the same as what we've been doing this whole time. So I'll just take it like this and just fill it in the top, inset it a couple times, then merge it in the center. Now, what I'll do here is add in a couple of loop cuts and add one in the bottom here like so now I might bevel this top like this a select all shift n to recalculate the normals then control 2 right click and shade smooth to add our sub d 
And so another thing I might want to do with this top cap is actually add some depth to it. So I'll hide my reference again, add a solidify modifier here, drag it on top. We'll go even thickness. That should be all right. I'll grab this, just edge slide it down. Just a tad somewhere down there. So it's got a sharper edge and I'll probably leave this one on, I could push it up a bit more if I wanted, a bit thicker, not too fussed about what it looks like on the inside, just that it looks like, looks all right on the outside. All right, so now we've done our liquid, I'll just call this cap, rename it. Now I'm going to start modeling everything on the inside, now I'm going to allow myself to select my image again and I'm just going to go depth front so I can see it through everything actually we'll leave it as default and we'll just use x-ray all right let's go alt z now most of this is fairly straightforward uh, we'll start off with this shape here so I think I just went and sort of moved my cursor to here so shift s with the selected and move the cursor to selected and it will move into the center of our object here so then when i add in the mesh so mesh circle and scale this down it'll be pretty much ready to go where we need it so i'm this is off center it's been pushed to the side um, just because of the straw but i'm going to model it centered so we'll just model it like this, E, E, Z, extruding it out. And then we'll just model the shape, which you should be pretty familiar with by now. So then I'll just grab this, E, Z, take that down, down to the bottom there. And we'll just add in a couple of loop cuts along here add one in there add some up there i'm going to push a loop up the top there Control r push a loop down to the bottom there also so now if i go Control Control 2 we get our image now what will i do here i'm just going to hide the bottle for now and also the liquid so if we have a look at this first of all let's flip the normals right click shade smooth so now we can play around with this so what i think i'll do alt z we'll have a look at this i'll bevel these edges here create a nice sharp edge and i'm pretty happy with this bit here we'll leave those two think that'll work now I'll probably bevel wait let's bevel this one control B just to pull in that edge there do the same we'll add a solidify drop it on top now I think when I was doing it the first time I want to thin this out a little bit more than what I had it so we'll go 0 0.005 and so it's really thin and this is just basically shading and we'll go even thickness um, there are some overlapping geometry I didn't really find that too much of an issue when I first went around all right let's start with the spring so for the spring I have to enable some extra objects so we can go edit preferences and if you search in the add-ons for extra objects I've got both of these turned on the spring is under the curve so we can add that as an object and what I'll do is the spring will come in massive so I'll sort of put it where I need it to be and I actually created two springs so I'll move the 3d cursor here to this loop Shift S, bring it here. 
we'll go shift a and then when we go to our curve you can see the curve spirals and you can just click on the curve spirals here I think so no let's go to the top option Archim Archimedean and so then we've got uh, turns so put in like 15 to begin with and we can adjust this we can then put in a height and so you can see what's happening here is our spring is growing in height so then also I brought the radius down bring it down something like this so you can see there we're pretty much ready to go spring is pretty good now you can leave this as it is um, I was pretty happy with it so I'll go shift D to duplicate it right click to paste in place and I'll just move this down to somewhere here and just scale it on the Z axis and we can move it back up just scale it up a little bit more something like this and we'll bring it up like here and if you go to side view if you press 3 you can actually see that you can join these so if I deselect this and press L hovering over it what it'll do is select linked mesh which means you can select these separately so if I go L you can select them separately and so what I'll do is get rid of these two vertices get rid of them I'll go L select that bring it down sort of in line grab this and just go F and that'll join it so then you can fiddle around with this and make sure it looks nice but it's usually too too small to see anyway so then you've got a spring like this you could have less geometry in the bottom here if you wanted to I'm going to select all scale this on everything but the Z axis so shift Z we'll go something like this now I'm also going to just grab the top here like that and I'll just press the period key move over to 3d cursor and that will tell us I want to pivot around the 3d cursor so then when I scale I can scale up like this and I'll just press Z so I can scale it up and I'm just looking to get this up into this area here so that you can't see the edge of the spring now with that mesh I can come down to my curves and we can go to geometry and we can add some depth so we don't want a lot we'll go something like 0.2 And that should be our spring in there. So I'll just call this spring. Now there is another object in here. So what I'll do is go add this one in. So I'll go shift A. We'll add in a quad sphere. And I think this is with extra objects. You can create a UV sphere if you'd like to. Won't make too much difference. I'll just drop. It's a mesh machine. I'll use use the Blender's um, tools just to follow along. So we'll add a UV sphere, and we'll drop the segments to like 24 because this is going to be tiny. 24 is still probably overkill. I'll just scale this down, bring it down here, and I can actually do this all in uh, object mode if I wanted to. We'll change the medium point pivot point back to medium point just by the, using the period key we'll scale this something like this going to hide this so I can see my mesh and that's pretty good we'll leave that um, I wasn't sure whether the spring was supposed to sit on it or not but in the imagery it doesn't so I won't sit it there so we'll leave that and the last one is just a curve or this so that's pretty easy let's hide our reference 
we'll show the bottle again and we'll go shift a and add in a curve just a bezier curve and so now what I do in edit mode I can just drag this bit here up into the top here and rotate it grab this bit drag it down to the bottom that we want it on and we can rotate this like this and if you scale it it'll reduce the curve and also if we go three we have to fix the rotation this way too I might just pull it forward or something like this rotate it like this let's bring it up here and we can do the same thing here so what I'll do is hold shift and add in depth and I'll just tab grab this oops let's rotate this a little bit we'll just try and center it a bit so that it works so now when I add my depth I can go up to here and you can also add a solidify modifier so if I add that it'll add another inset so I'll just add something small 03 or something like that to the straw maybe not that small 05 yeah that'll work all right and then we can adjust this a little bit I think it's a bit too bit too big so we can skinny that down just under the geometry bevel and depth here in your curve options and we can just call this straw another creative name then we can move on to the label so what I'm going to do is just the last detail up in the top just before we do the label so up in here there's a little detail just here and so let me think the easiest way to do this one I think the first time I did it was just shift a I added in a circle let's move this up in up to the top here we can tab into edit mode just bring it in like so now I'm going to hide my reference E to extrude straight down I'm just going to hide the bottle just make sure that the normals are the correct way around select everything and then I can go alt E this will bring up the extrude menu and then I can go extrude along normals so then I can take it in it's completely flipped all my normals I'll just take it into somewhere let's go inside actually somewhere here that'll work so now I can select all shift n to recalculate the normals now what I'll do here is if I go slash I'll just grab all these edges control B to bevel them like so Control 2 in object mode and we'll add a subdivision like so. That should work. Let's uh, just add in some loop cuts here. Just to help out the subdivision a little bit. Not that it needs it. So then I do not know what to call this. We'll just call it stopper. And so then I can press slash to get out of here call this pump we're just picking random names at this point all right so we're good to move on to the label the label just comes from here and the way I did it last time was I brought up my reference and basically I want to create the curve first so if I go grab just a piece out of here so if I grab a loop here from the outside shift D right click and P to separate the selection then I get this curve here which is hard to select recall this label curve and now what I can do is go object down to convert to curve and so there we go 
So if I look straight on, I might move the, if I go object set origin to the geometry, that'll move this little orange dot from the base where it was up to the center. And the important thing about curves is both origins have to be in the exact same spot. So now when I create my label, shift S, and I go to the here, which is uh, cursor to selected, it'll move my 3D cursor to the selected object. Now, what I'm going to do is create a label roughly this size. So I'll go shift A, we'll add in a plane. I'll rotate this on the X by 90. So it looks like this. And then I'm just going to scale this down and in object mode, I'm just going to move it into place. So I'll scale, scale it up a little bit more, roughly to the size I need. Let's just quickly save this. So now what I can do in edit mode is right click and subdivide this. And I'll just subdivide it a whole bunch of times. So we'll go 10 to begin with. Let's see what 11 looks like. You can manually type in the options if you would like. 12. We'll go 10 and then I'll right click and subdivide it again. There we go. And now if I go control two, I get that rounded corner with the subdivision modifier. And we should be able to bend this to what we want. Just quickly save this. Looks like it's getting a bit choppy. So now with this object selector, I can go shift S um, cursor to selected. And then I'll call this one uh, label. We're, and then we'll select the label curve here. And I can go shift S and then go um, selection to cursor. And so that'll just move it straight up. Now in my modifier stack for my label, what I'll do is come to modifiers and I'll add in a curve modifier. So we've got it here, curve, and then I can select this curve just by eyedroppering it. We'll get something like this. So then what I do is drop this above and then I'll add in a solidify modifier. And I think this is okay on the bottom here. Let's shade this smooth. We'll go even thickness. And what I'll do is I'll just check which way this is going first. We will go even smaller point zero zero two, something like that. We'll flip it so we'll go offset of one. No, nope. negative one worked well. Point zero zero five. That'll work. Now I might just drag this above my subdivision. Now I press one to look straight on. Grab the curve and then make sure that you also select the label and you want the label to be the lighter orange of the selections. Then go control P, keep to transform. And then I can rotate this so that it's sort of sitting like this. And now when I, I can just move this label around without worrying about the curve. All right, so that's pretty much all the modeling done. So we've got all our detail in here. Everything is pretty much ready to go. Another thing you might want to do in the head here, see if I double click this a couple times, this here, might be better if it goes to the edge here. I'm nitpicking at this point, but even just here, like if I go control B, undo that, grab this, control B. And then we'll grab this edge, and our selection, negative. Go something like that. Scale, Shift S. Do something like this. And 
then let's grab this loop and just bevel that one. So we've just got this top as if it's actually joined. All right. So now we're ready to continue on. And so in the next part, we are going to add all the materials to all our objects. All right, so for the shading, I'm going to attempt to, to make it pretty similar to what I did in the first. I'm just going to divide up my space a couple times. We'll look through the camera here. I have to show that, so show camera, zero. Let's uh, bring this up like so. Push it back, bring it up a bit more. We'll go control B to just isolate that camera. Press Z and go up to the rendered view. And we'll let it go. Going to turn off the world lighting for this. And we're pretty much ready to start. So I think this is all right, yep. All right, so what we'll do is we'll start with the main object here, which this is just the, the bottle here. I might have to turn back on my world lighting here. Now I've just got a HDRI in here. Yours will just be gray. You can also use the, here, the viewport shading if you want to uh, see what the materials are looking like. I'll create a new material first of all, and we'll call this one uh, bottle. We'll probably reuse this one a little bit. So then I'm just going to bring it into this weird looking color somewhere here. And then down here, I'll up the transmission and then pop the roughness down to like 0.05. Something like that. Then I'll apply that bottle also to my liquid. Actually, I might do a new setup for liquid. So we'll duplicate that, call it liquid. Get rid of the principled BSDF. And what I'll do is I'll add in a glass. And I can just plug that straight into the surface and that should be good to go. Now there's a few things here. Looks like my normals are probably backwards. So this rendering issue, I think it's normals on the actual, like, yeah. So see here, we haven't completed our liquid here yet. So the reason for that was because I wanted it to stop. So if I go up here, bring it down a little bit, press F to fill it in. We'll just do this. We'll add a loop cut right there. A select all shift N and then that will fix the shading. So it's looking all right now. Um, there's still a few things that make it look pretty ugly, but I think that's the HCRI. Okay, so the next one, I'm just gonna pull up a reference in here so we'll just pull up our reference image here this one here that might help next one is the cap so what i'll do for this one is i'll just make it like really dark and then the roughness is pretty good maybe just drop it a bit just got a little bit of reflection let's go even darker Something like that. All right, let's continue on. Now, it's looking very red. We'll fix that in a second. So now what I'm going to do is hide the bottle and the liquid. Liquid, here you are. We'll grab these two. We'll add liquid to it. I'll add liquid to that one. Now, I'll also add liquid to this. So this is all just clear objects here. We'll add 
Maybe the cap, duplicate it, call it stopper. And what I might do is like, I don't know what I'm doing there, really. We'll grab this, call this spring, new material. And we'll just bump the roughness all the way up. No, sorry, metallic all the way up, roughness all the way down. So then you just create a metal material there. And that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that so far. We'll turn those back on. And then I'll come to the label. We'll call this label. Now what I'm going to do is go into edit mode for this one. We will go change this to a UV editor. And it's pretty good straight off the bat. So what I'll do now is I'll just drop in my image like so. And we can use this image as you can see here. If I just select all, scale this down it sort of fills the area and just move it into place. Tab out. So it looks like something's going on here. If I shift N, will that work? Where would my label be? We've got to plug it in. <laughs> it helps if you plug stuff in, doesn't it? Alright, so it's all backwards. So what we'll do... What are we what are we doing in the bottom corner at the moment? So scale this on the Y by one and then press negative hit enter. That, that that doesn't help. Let's undo that. Okay. We need a scale on S X by one then negative. There, that looks a bit better. I'll just move it. Okay. Now, let's move, scale it up a little bit. Just sort of position it to your liking. All right, so now I can adjust this a little bit. I think I had the roughness down, so it's a bit more of a reflective material. And you could add a bit of sheen if you wanted to. That's all for experimentation. So once we get our lighting in, it'll look all right. All right, so let's move on to the lighting. I'll change this back to a 3D viewport and we'll start on that. All right, so the lighting for this was pretty simple. Um, the only issue I had was just getting the color of this to look uh, fairly nice. So what we'll do is I'll close the product and we will get out of isolation mode here and then I'll select the lighting and so I'll just hide this for a second. Most of the time when I set up lighting I set it up pretty much the same way now. So I used to use image textures but you can do it all in Blender if you know how to do it. So what I'll do is I'll set up a let's move our cursor back to the center so shift s cursor to world origin and I'll just go shift a we'll add in a plane and then shift a and add in a light an area light and just move this light just above the plane then with the area light selected shift click the plane go control p keep transformation and I'll call this first one a key light. The so key light's just your main light. We'll drop the strength of the background to zero. And then we can work with this. So I'm just going to bring this forward. We'll turn on our product. Bring this up. We'll face it in the direction that we would like. Move it over. Now I'm going to make this super big. So I'll bring it like this. Make it super big. Hold down period to change to the 3D cursor. Rotate this on the local X axis. So you can get the local X axis by pressing X twice. And I just drop this down. So now what I do 
is I can increase the power to like 500. And it won't do anything yet because I need to add a material here. So let's add in a material on the plane. We'll call this diffuse. And I'll get rid of the principled and add in a new shift A. Search for a new, we'll search for translucent. And then we'll just plug the translucent into the surface here. So there we go. Let's go something like this. I'm going to go period, medium point, scale this area light up nice and big. I want this super bright, so let's go higher. Let's go 1000. It's all right. It's not, it's not super bright yet. But let's uh, put in our background light and start playing with the colors before we continue on. I'm looking just for a nice um, highlight here. I'm not moving the plane. It's the whole reason I parented it. Let's move it down a bit. I'll rotate this around. The more you rotate it around, that bit's getting distracting now, but let's add some roughness to this. So it's not so. Yep, I think that works. I'm going to move this closer. So it's a bigger. As you can see here, it's bigger um, light source, and I can scale down the light source also by the med medium point here. And what that'll do is if I scale it down and move it away, it'll add a softer edge. Now, in this case, I'm not, I think I want it a bit sharper than usual. Something like that looks all right. Let's hide our viewport overlays. All right, so the next thing I want to do is we'll grab this, we'll go shift right square bracket, and that'll select all the objects that it's that is parented to the selected object. Shift D to duplicate this. I'll rename the top one, um, let's call it liquid light or something. Liquid light just helps me find it again. And with the liquid like selected, I can go Alt R and Alt G. That'll move it back, to reset all the transform and rotation. Oh, this looks sort of cool. Let's go move it back in place. Let's rotate it on the X 90 and then press negative. Go the other way. Now I don't want to see this. So we can select this and go to these options here. And down in these options here, what we've got is the visibility. And I can check ray visibility here. That'll hide it for me. So now I can just edit this backlight here. I'm going to scale it in on the X axis. And we'll just create this nice thin light. We'll go something like this. I can also change the spread so I can go like 120. Scale it like this. If I move it away a bit too, I can get a softer fall off to the edge of the, the shape here. Now we've got a bit of editing to do with our colors here. Also, that doesn't look great. Let's have a look. What's going on here? It's somewhere up in here. I'll have a look at it. So this is created by basically when we create the liquid layer here, the, they basically are sitting on top of each other. So you've got to grab the liquid layer, select it all, and then go Alt S and scale it up a bit. And so scaling it up will push it into 
inside basically the bottle and so then you won't get that weird shading issue then let's have a look at this I'm going to probably adjust continue adjusting colors here I just want it a little bit more orange and it will take its time to render out and the colors will change as it goes on now I'm going to bring this in so you can see that we're getting an edge edge light here so by bringing this in I can actually do it in edit mode too if I bring it in I can actually take it away if I wanted but it is I think it is nice so I'll leave it something like this then save and what I'll do is I'll come up here go to color management we'll add some contrast all right, so I think this is ready for our first render. We'll take a peek at what it's going to look like. So it's looking fairly nice. Um, I sort of want it a bit more I'm not sure how to get this color, but something around there. And you can just keep on adjusting things. Let's make this bigger, maybe. Grab that back. Let's grab it here. Go it in a little bit, save, and I'll give it a final render. I'm pretty happy with this. I'd probably keep adjusting it a little bit, but I've pretty much got the same result as what I started with. Only thing missing now is probably just a reflector. So you just can just add a big plane in, which will reflect the light. I'm going to, to save this as a render. So we'll save it there. So you could um, you go shift A, add in a big plane. So we'll rotate this on the Y axis by 90. Move it out to the side and we'll just make this nice and big. If we unpause this, you can see what happens when we bring it back into the edge. Basically this light here is bouncing straight off this one and filling this side. So you can move this away to control how dark you want that to be so I want it to be a fairly flat image so I'll do something like that and then we can render that out like so that's it for this tutorial if you're interested we have a course on product visualization and you can learn all about product visualization there's lots more content coming to it the biggest thing you can learn at the moment is wine bottles and how to light that we've also got part of the art of lighting course released and there's some tips and tricks on how to light and how to imitate light especially how to find inspiration for new setups if you have any questions drop them down below and i'll be sure to answer them until next time i'll see you guys later